Today, we are going to look at one of the most fascinating games in chess history. This was the original immortal game played between Adolf Anderson and Lionel Kaiseritsky. Let's get straight into it. Anderson was playing as white and Kaiseritsky was playing with the black pieces. Anderson started with e4, Kaiseritsky played e5 and then Anderson went for f4, the king's gambit. This was a game played in 1851 and in those days it was quite common to accept such gambits. Therefore, black obliged and he took this pawn on f4. Now the most popular move from white in this position is knight f3 guarding against this queen h4 check. But Anderson went for bishop c4. Black came down with queen h4 check. He can't block with g3 because this pawn is pinned to the rook. Therefore, white went for the obvious move king to f1. Now black came up with an awkward looking move, pawn to b5. I guess he was looking to distract this bishop from this f7 diagonal, but this was not such a good move. White simply took it and here both players have gambited a pawn. Then Kaiseritsky plays knight f6, attacking this pawn on e4. Anderson did not care about this and he went for an attack on the queen with knight f3. Black had to move his queen, he went for queen h6, maintaining his defense of the f4 pawn. Now Anderson played d3. He could have actually gone for d4 that would have given him two powerful central pawns and even if black tried something like knight takes, white could have simply pinned it with the queen and then he could go after the knight. But that did not happen. White played d3 and black responded with this sneaky knight to h5. His idea was knight g3 check to fork the king and rook because pawn can't capture because of this pin. Here rook to g1 was a good option but white went for knight to h4 preventing this check because now white can simply capture with the pawn. Therefore black went for another double attack but this time with his queen. Queen g5 double attacking the knight and bishop. Knight f5 was the obvious choice and Anderson played it. Here g6 could have been a good move to put some pressure on this knight. But instead of that, black decided to attack the bishop with c6. Anderson was quite an aggressive player and the next move was a proof of that. He played g4, opening up his king side and throwing an attack on this knight. Most players would avoid taking such a risk, but that's how Anderson played. Anyway, black saved his knight by moving it to f6. Now comes another bold move from Anderson. He played rook to g1. It's interesting because he's protecting this pawn but giving away his bishop. Maybe he was looking to trap this queen. Anyways, black accepts the sacrifice and takes the bishop. Then white played h4, attacking the queen. Then queen g6 is the only safe square for the queen. Now Anderson goes for h5. Queen g5 again is the only safe square. Now comes queen f3 with the idea of bishop f4 to trap the queen. Black had to free up some space for his queen so he went for knight g8 opening up these squares for his queen to move. This knight was the only developed piece and now that's also gone back to its original position. In terms of development this is looking dreadful for black even though he's a piece up. Now white takes this pawn as expected then queen f6 saves the queen and also attacks on b2. White plays knight c3 preventing this capture. Black tried bishop c5 attacking the rook trying to develop with tempo. But Anderson ignores it and plays knight to d5 attacking the queen and eyeing to fork the king and rook. Black decided to take on b2. Now both of Anderson's rooks are hanging but he does not care one bit and plays bishop d6 getting closer to the king. Actually rook e1 was a better move but Anderson makes it exciting by playing bishop d6. Now this is one of the most crucial moves as far as black is concerned. And I believe he made a mistake here. He captured this rook with his bishop. He desperately needed this bishop to protect these dark squares around the king. The best move was actually queen a1 check followed by king e2, queen b2 and say if white takes the bishop then queen c2 check wins back the bishop with this fork and then it looks quite good for black. But Kaiseritsky didn't play this. He played bishop g1 and now Anderson played one of the most subtle yet the most beautiful move of the game. He did not take the bishop, he did not save his rook, he did not give a check either. What he played in the game was the surprising move pawn to e5. This looks quite silly but it was a well thought out move. With this e5 move he is creating this really strong mating net around the black king. 
Another thing it does is that it blocks off this black queen from coming to his king's defense. Now black takes this rook as well, but does that really matter? Let's see. It's a check, so white moves away his king to e2. Now black made another mistake. He played this unusual looking move, knight to a6. It seems he was concerned about this knight c7 check, but that was a blunder because now white is completely winning. Can you find the winning move continuation for white? All right, it's an incredible sequence of moves which begins with knight to g7 check. King d8 is the only legal move. And now comes the brilliant queen sacrifice. Queen to f6 check. There's not much that black can do here, so he just takes the queen. And now, if you go by the value of pieces, white is down 21 points. He sacrificed almost everything apart from these three minor pieces. But this was all he needed. He struck the final nail in the coffin with bishop to e7 and that's a beautiful checkmate. What an amazing game this was. Well, hit the thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you loved it. And now, let's see if you can solve this puzzle. This was actually one of Vidit Gujarati's famous games and he was playing as white. In fact, it is Vidit's birthday today, so a very happy birthday to him. Alright, in this position, can you find the best move he played as white? Do share your answers in the comment section below. Well, don't forget to like and subscribe and I shall see you in the next one.